I'm Zim Zoe, and this video is all about reviews because I'm going to be reviewing the Royal Hot Pole Hotel in Tewkesbury and a film I watched last night. Now, the reason I wanted to do these reviews is one, because I really wanted to talk about this film, which you probably know what film I'm going to be talking about, given by either the thumbnail, the description, or if you don't know, you're just here for the surprise. Um, but the hotel, the reason I'm reviewing that is because uh, with this whole getting a new phone, I've been trying to like get rid of a lot of stuff off my old phone to clean up some space. And there was some footage of the hotel when I stayed there. And I thought, well, why not give a review on it? Now, the footage, unfortunately, I filmed before I started vlogging. So instead of being horizontal, it's vertical. And <laughs> I'm sorry about that. It's also a bit shaky. And I've gotten rid of all of the audio and added some music instead because it was quite loud. But the footage itself shows um, a single uh, guest bedroom with ensuite. Um, a double without the ensuite because I couldn't film it. And it also shows the journey all the way from my room down to reception past the bar restaurant on the bottom floor and out into the beer garden and then I do a panoramic of the beautiful shot on the uh, end of the beer garden. Um, so I'm just gonna play those now.
Now, for what I thought about it, the review, I quite enjoyed my stay. Um, the bed was really comfortable. There wasn't anything wrong with the ensuite. Um, the room was a little noisy, but that was just because I had the room directly above the kitchen. So it was kind of inevitable. Um, but other than that, I've got no real complaints. I mean, staying out in the beer garden at evening when the sun is setting over that river, oh my god, it is so beautiful. It really is. So if you can get there when there's nice weather, absolutely wonderful. I would say one thing about the stairs, because it's an old uh, Victorian Tudor house that's sort of been modified, uh, it's still got the original, well not the original, but it's got uh, the original sort of style of the staircases. Perhaps it is the original, I don't know. Uh, what I'm trying to say <laughs> is that they're not like modern staircases, in which case they're sort of the flat, the level, and they're easy to get up. Because these staircases, some of them were slightly wonky, as you saw before I showed you the double guest room. And they're one person only, and they're quite steep. It's one of those you need to hold on to the banister. <laughs> But um, aside from that, I absolutely loved it. It was a gorgeous place, nice weather, gorgeous views. So, yeah, I, I hope my thoughts help you. Didn't really think this through. <laughs> As for the second half of this review, I said I wanted to review a film that I watched last night. And that film was The Babadook. I hadn't seen it yet. And I thought, well, you know, three years it's been out. I might as well give it a go. I've heard that it's a pretty decent horror film. I absolutely adored it. <laughs> um, firstly, and I'm going to point this out first because it's most important for me because I am a horror film fanatic. It doesn't rely on jump scares. Yes! Like, I don't, this is my opinion. But jump scares are scary for about half a second. Like, if you see a film... First one that comes to mind immediately is the woman in black. That was mainly jump scare based. It was sort of, oh, tension, tension, tension. A crow flies out of somewhere and you're like, duh, for half a second. And the second time you watch it, you're just like, yep. It's got no scare factor after the first time you watch it. It's And jump scares have got no real scare factor the first time you watch it either because it's like somebody sneaking up behind you going, rah, on your shoulders. You go, duh, for half a second. Then you're like, ha ha, okay, I get it. And that's it. It's not scary in my opinion it's just it's if you can't create tension or interest in your storyline if you can't create real fear you resort to jump scares and i just don't like them because i don't find them scary at all and this film had none of them and i was like yes it's mainly it's not a gore fest like um i'd say evil dead mm. Then again, that wasn't really a gore fest. Okay, it's not like a gore fest like Saw. It's a more psychological thriller. Um, on the lines of ghosts and possession sort of thing. Oh, it is really, really good though. The artwork for the Babadook book itself, beautifully done. Absolutely gorgeous. Because basically it's all these like uh, little figures. Like, you know, a pop-up book with the, with the characters stick up out of the book and then you can pull little tabs on them to make them do stuff. And some of the the actions on it are just so flawless. It's it's gorgeous. It really is. Like, half of me would say if they had the book on sale, I'd be like, yes, I want one. The other half of me is like, no, because of what the film basically is. Um, Because the book, the Mr. Babadook book, brings along a spirit with it. And... This spirit is basically, you know, it, it builds up. It really does. It's one of those at the beginning. At the beginning, I found it difficult to get into because there's a lot of, I don't know what you'd call it, jump cuts. It's basically like two seconds of this cut, two seconds cut. And it basically it jumps a lot because it's showing you basically like their daily life and sort of thing. Oh, speaking of the daily life, I am so happy they made characters that you can actually feel for. I'm like, yes, like it's one of those at the beginning, you're sort of like, mm, I don't know about these characters, but at the end, you do really feel for them. You can empathize or sympathize. I can't remember which is the right word to use there with the characters. 
And it's, it's not like one of these films where like four teenagers go into the woods and then there's a serial killer. Which one of them will die first? And you're just like, well, I don't really care. All of them can die for, for all I care. You know, you haven't made me like the characters. I can't really, you know, <sighs> whatever. Don't care. I'm just here to see them all die, basically. But this film, it's sort of like you do sort of root for the characters after a while. Once you've learnt what they're like. Oh, it's great. And the monster design itself very subtle the way it comes in as i said it builds up so it starts up with small things and then they get bigger and bigger and sort of more terrifying as towards the end but <laughs> i myself after about halfway through the film i couldn't take it serious the, the the monster seriously because it had been very very tense and stuff like you didn't know what was going to happen next but the first time you hear the babadook talk I just, <laughs> I couldn't take it seriously. I'm going to show you the clip now and see what you think about it and then explain why I couldn't take it seriously. Claire. Hello. Now, I don't know if you find that scary or not, but all I could hear was somebody on the other end of that phone inhale talking. So instead of breathing out while you talk, they breathed in. All I could hear was a guy going, ba ba duck, duck, duck. And I was just like, well then, <laughs> it's just some guy pulling a prank. And I was just like, why would you use that? You have so, like, some of the sounds they use later on in the film for the Babadook are fantastic. The design, not only in the look of it, but in the sound of the creature is fantastic. So why did they use that noise for the phone call? I was just like, oh my God. Another thing which I thought was quite funny was during a, a vision premonition nightmare thing halfway through the film, the Babadook is seen like on the ceiling, sort of above her while she's trying to sleep. And it moves very quickly and I was like, ooh, that's interesting. And this is the first time we'd seen the creature in full, like seeing it like move and stuff. Because we'd seen it like in the background here, in the background there, and sort of like, oh, there was something there, was it it? Sort of like that. But it was the first time it actually showed up and like done something. And it moved across the ceiling around the light so fast. And I was like, oh, this could be terrifying. But they made it like skitter or scuttle. It was like a sort of chicka -chicka 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 across the ceiling. And I was just like, it's a giant crab. <laughs> I was just like, it's one of those, like the film is scary, but it's just, uh, that tickled me. Another one uh, later on when she thinks she's escaped the Babadook, its hat falls down next to her. And it's sort of one of those moments, oh God, it's in there with her. And it's sort of like, all I could see was the Babadook going, Oh no, I've dropped my hat. <laughs> oh, it was, it was, for me, it was a good laugh, but it was also a great film. And the ending, I'm not going to talk about the ending because I was expecting one thing and then perhaps another thing to happen, like a twist sort of thing. And then the ending it gave, I was just like, that was probably the last thing I would ever predict. And I was just like, oh my God goodness there was one thing i didn't understand about it which it was literally just like a a, a two second sort of thing when she rips out one of her own teeth and i was just like why i know she's been like pouring at the tooth throughout the film especially when she's stressed but i don't understand it doesn't give reasoning for it so that confused me a bit and i was just like mm -hmm. but it wasn't a huge part in it so it didn't like ruin the film or anything um, also, another thing that sort of made me laugh was during the final battle, the, the Babadook, one of its noises, I don't know whether they knew this or not, but one of the sound effects they use, it must have been in a game or something, because I've heard this before, I've heard it before so much that I've quoted it or named it the dragon death sound, it's sort of like this screech and I was just like, well, now I can't stop seeing, like, the dragon death sound. Like, it's just playing games in the darkness or something. And I was just like, oh my goodness. That and the final, like, screech 
Well, not the final screech. One minute, I need to fix my hair. There we go. Sorry, it was bugging me. <laughs> and it was sort of like this long screech. And it just literally, to me, it sounded like the demon version of a kid going, Mom! Like, that was... Ah! Like, sort of basically complaining and having a tantrum, which I thought was really funny. Uh, but if you enjoy horror films that don't rely on jump scares, that were actually quite scary, but at the same time, can you can have some fun with it, I fully recommend The Babadook. It's an absolutely wonderful film. Um, so I suppose that's going to be the end of the review section, but there's a few things I want to add at the end for those of you who watch my vlogs and aren't, aren't just here for the review. As you may have noticed, this is a lot wider. You can see stuff that's on my table and also like the edge of my door frame. And the reason is, I'm filming with my new camera. I still haven't got a case for it, but I'm filming with it. And one thing I realised is there's so much more space. Like, I could work so much with, like, so much more now. And it's, like, really, I'm just, I'm really happy with it. Uh, I still haven't found an editor to work with the stuff on my phone. So at the moment, I'm still using the editor on my computer and transferring all the, um, the files across. But... I'm going to find one for it, so that way I can edit stuff if I'm like on holiday or something, or on the move, I'll be able to edit and then upload it without having to move it to the computer every time. Uh, but I suppose that's it for this video. I Oh, before I finish it, the speed painting, because I know some of you are probably expecting a speed painting video considering like the last three videos have been speed painting. Painting's not done yet, I haven't worked on it because I don't really know what to talk about over it. I was going to do the reviews over it, but I thought, well, why not just make it a full thing? Um, I also have some footage from my old phone that I'm thinking of putting into a few new videos. Um, now, I think that's about it. Can't think of anything else. <laughs> um, so I hope you've enjoyed today's video, and have a nice day.